Listen, I want to I want to start with uh, a huge congrats on the movie um, and also being Thank part you. of the Toronto Film Festival, which is such an amazing place to play movies. Um, and I have so many questions for everyone, but uh, I want to know uh, what was it about this material that said I want to spend what could be years of my life making it? You know, uh, it's so rare. I feel that, you know what you want to make ties so deeply to your own sort of personal or family story. Um, and I kind of put out into the world that I wanted to do something around aviation because my father was a naval aviator when I was growing up. So this, this story and getting to discover it has been this really neat but odd opportunity to honor the story of these two men, but also in this kind of weird way, also tell my dad's story. Glenn, I have an individual question for you. Um, when did you decide that you wanted to take every pilot role from Hollywood for so no other actors could do it? <clears throat> I've always needs, considered myself a two pretty. Mics for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, this is the uh, this is the Top Gun mic. This is the devotion Wicked. mic. Wicked. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I think um, I think I've been told I'm not allowed to take any more pilot roles for a bit. I'm I'm being a little selfish. I think we it, it's time to pass on uh, pilot roles to somebody else. <laughs> does that does that rule out astronauts? Uh, I've already played John Glenn. Uh, <laughs> True. Yeah, you're right. I got to stay out of the sky, man. I got yeah. to put my feet well, on the ground. Ground. Yeah, ground. I, I got to be more grounded. That's for sure. Yeah, but being serious, um, what people won't, might not know is you were very instrumental in this project getting off the ground, and it was something you've been working on prior to Top Gun. Yeah, I think it's been about six years since I first read the book, um, and it's been a process. But I got to say, that's been the dream: is to be here right now with the perfect cast, perfect director. We have the perfect producers, perfect studio, and and really people believe in this movie. And it's always been the dream. It rarely works out like this. But um, I made a promise to the Hudner family and the Brown family that we were going to put this movie together and really honor their legacy. And I'm just so thrilled on how it's come together. Uh, this is a question for everyone. Uh, I'm sure all of you read a bunch of scripts. You hear about things, et cetera, et cetera. What was it about this particular project and this script and this story that said, oh, I need to be a part of this? And this is for everyone. I'll, I'll jump on that. Um, the title itself, Devotion, really, really hit me as I was like, that. it's kind of a secret word. It's a word that, that we can only hold on to for ourselves, you know? And in reading it, I went, okay, this, this script is telling a secret. You know, how do we survive as, as a human species? How we survive as, uh, in particular to uh, my character as a, as a black man, you know? And there is a certain amount of, secret devotion how you move through the world how you treat other people how you have to treat yourself uh in order to move through it and uh i think every character uh has to come up against that in the film and uh no none more than jesse and so that that's what really grabbed me um to, to kind of tell that secret and bring that to the screen mm. uh, for me um i read it and the story's amazing and it was beautiful and and vivid. Um, the character of Jesse, him choosing Daisy as his partner mm. and being that woman who carries on so much for him when he's around, when he's not around. Um, I wanted it, even if I didn't get it, I wanted to see it. Um, and then actually going through the process of making it, it was amazing. Just finishing and seeing what we end up with it was like that was that was i was supposed to be here that was a, a good choice this is the love of the story exactly. I, I just want to say without a doubt because she's so beautiful <laughs> she's so it's incredible in the movie thank you <laughs> i mean really it is it is like the heartbeat of the movie that it's it's it does not work without you and, and christina just brings so much heart to this movie it's thank incredible you. oh a hundred percent i don't want to do any spoilers but yeah if, if, if the audience doesn't buy into the two of you right. and, and your relationship it's game over right. Mm -hmm. right absolutely i think this film has everything i mean obviously there's a beautiful love story there's heroics there's heartbreak no spoilers but th there's a lot to this film that i think people will really love and from the book to the script to on screen and jd's brilliance of putting this all together it, it speaks volume, so uh, I can't wait to see it myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that it's really, it's really rare that you have an opportunity to be part of uh, a project that actually honors um, a legacy. But it's not just a legacy of two men who had an extraordinary life to, 
uh, but it is a, it's a family that had an extraordinary life. And then it's a group of friends and colleagues who had an extraordinary life. I mean, the That's year, right. the year or two that these, these people all went through together is, is absolutely unbelievable. You couldn't write this script. It could only exist in reality. Mm -hmm. And to be able to pay honor to the people who lived it every single day with each other uh, is a rare gift. And I think, you know, from, from the instant I picked up the script into the instant I put it down, I knew that it was something that I wanted to be a part of. You don't get those gifts very often as an artist and, and to be given it, it's incredible. Yeah, thanks, Glenn. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, JD. Yeah, hey, Joe. Hey, appreciate yeah. everybody here. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, bro. That's great. I, I, by the way, I did get to talk to two Korean War Medal of Honor recipients last night who literally said the same thing, which is, it, like, in terms of the brotherhood, in terms of, you know, these guys aren't, aren't brothers, they're soulmates, in terms of no one knows you the way someone that you served through hell with knows you. And so there's a connection, there's a bond there that I really feel like this group embodies and it's hard to describe, but I feel like this movie is the first movie I've ever seen that really captures that. I actually want to single out um, uh, Thomas with, <laughs> you're like, wait, what? I, uh, you? I really enjoyed the way your character, and I don't know how much is fact and fiction, how much is an amalgamation, but that your character in the film, I really enjoyed the commander because it was written in a way that I was not expecting. Mm -hmm. It was very much a, a and your performance specifically, it was very much a, like a loving, I love these people. These are my family. And um, can you sort of talk about that aspect? Because it's not the normal commander if you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, Dick Savoli wasn't the normal commander. Um, I played the man as I understood him to be. And, uh, you know, we actually sat and, and talked quite a bit about um, making sure that we didn't fall into the trap uh, that is so common in these sort of movies um, and that we actually honored the man. Uh, his family was very clear about the fact that he was just this incredibly loving spirit. Adam Makos, who wrote the book, uh, was very clear about the relationship that he had with the Brown family and, and with the Hunters and with everybody who was in the squadron. It was He was just a different kind of dude. And um, I think that it actually speaks to JD's quality as a director, as a collaborator, that he believed enough in the reality of the story to let it actually happen. You know, that he didn't he didn't want to fall down into a trope because it was safe, because you don't know when you take a risk of breaking a trope uh, if it's going to work. And, you know, that's up to the audience, I guess, ultimately to decide. But we had a hell of a good time breaking it. And I think that it, it did a lot for all of us on the day. It opened things up in a way that we allowed us to sort of play and have a good time in ways that I don't think you would normally get to see in this sort of a film. Well, it's the funny thing, you know, like everybody has to be in the same movie. And, you know, starting with like the, the richness and depth that, you know, we kind of center on Jesse. Like if, if the rest of the cast, if the rest of the characters in that film are not operating from a similar space, or at least operating with similar authenticity, you know, I feel like that's where the movie starts to fall apart. Um, so it was really this like start in the center, build out, have these conversations with everyone, make sure that, you know, we are bringing like as authentic and honest a representation of these people to the screen. And then I think that's what sort of then creates this cohesion among the movie and hopefully like this emotional honesty, you know? No, I, I all in for me. Um, this question for all of you. Uh, I would imagine on every shoot, you're looking at the schedule and what you have to accomplish each day. There must be one day on the shoot that you have circled because whether or not it's going to be a technically challenging day, an emotional performance, something where maybe you have to go deep in yourself to deliver. For each of you, what was the day on the schedule that you either really nervous about or eventually my voice will, you know, I'll grow through puberty. It's early. It's early. And, um, uh, either that you were either really nervous about or just really excited about? I think there's always um, moments when you show up and realize, at least on this set, that you're going to lose somebody. Mm -hmm. And no spoilers, I don't need to name names, but there's, there's emotion that we all have to go through, especially these guys that spend days on these decks when wars are happening and p lives are lost every single day. You don't know if somebody's going to land that plane and make it back. And so, um, th to get into that emotion, it's just, it's never easy. And it's, um, it it's, it was an emotional roller coaster to say the least. Uh, for me, 
there are two. I won't say one, but um, it's the day in the kitchen where Jesse tells Daisy that he's leaving. Yeah. And that conversation is like, we talked about it. It's like, this is what we work towards. And she's like, no, I get it. But like, I don't want you to go. <laughs> and just trying to find those notes and that emotionality and knowing that, yes, this is what he does and it means the world to him and he's following his purpose. And me as the actress getting into that space where I am fully on board with it, but being true to the emotionality that she is not. And that was a really, really hard. I remember I was like, I am vulnerable right now. <laughs> and so that was one for me. I and won't say the other one. Beautiful to watch. Thank you. <laughs> it takes an incredible amount of courage to do that on a, on film and you did it and it is beautiful Thank to watch. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Oh no, that wasn't for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you know, all, all what maybe, you know, in a movie that has like in camera aviation and like a, a, a lot of sort of logistic complexity, I would say every day, we every day, for you, bud. every day. Yeah. Only all 57 days of the schedule. Uh, no, but I, I mean, honestly, I think it really boils down to and I still remember the C numbers 125 and 127. Um, it is in the officer's quarters when the two of you are sort of expanding what the notion of allyship means. Um, and like, I don't care how many squibs we have going off, like how many explosions or how many planes from 1950 we're trying to put in the sky. The hardest part is telling an honest story. And, you know, I think with the two of them behind me, this everybody, but in those two scenes that mm. these two gentlemen behind me, I mean, A, I couldn't have gotten through those scenes without, you know, their sort of, <laughs> prowess um but i think going into the schedule and even now being done with the movie uh hardest thing is just to tell that story honestly i, I almost just, cried Jeez. Yeah. oh no <laughs> by the way jd is the most emotional director i've ever met in my whole life you literally have over the monitor what do you want them to feel yeah. which is which is a really rare and special quality quality i um i i will say one of the one of the things that I think there's those scenes in the movie that people know are foundational scenes, but I think what makes this movie really special is that it's a it's a it's an interesting sum of its parts and some of these scenes that are really they they come across as small, but they do so much of the heavy lifting in terms of character for the entire cast and I think it's interesting how some of the crew, like I don't know, I don't know if you felt like this, but it's like some of the crew comes up, they're like, "Hey, big day coming up! Oh, I hope you, I hope you're ready, big day." I'm like, "Hey, we can, we cannot do that." You know? Um, I know, I, I, I know, I got it. Um, but but then there's these scenes that you know, as as we're we're diving into you know story and character, the crew may not perceive this as to be a big scene, but we know it does so much of the heavy lifting of what makes this movie work. So, and those are the scenes that keep you up at night for me personally. If we have time, um, <laughs> if we have time, I'll, I'll, I'll throw one in. Yeah, I, I definitely want to hear it. Okay. And then... Yes, sir. Um, I, I think for f one, this is our first interview as a company and this is just beautiful. So thank you for, for moderating and being so warm and allowing us to, um, yeah, it's, it, it's big for us, I guess. Um, but, but to conclude the, uh, the, the scene in particular for me, um, wasn't necessarily a big scene because it, it, it's, it's just me and a, me and me, you know, Jesse and Jesse. Um, but it was an, it, it was an expensive scene because there's moments in films where you you see the metal of the human being. You you we talked about the secret earlier. That secret is completely exposed in that moment, and it's not pretty, and it's quite ancestral what he's going through. And it, oh, mm, mm -hmm. don't do it, Jay. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite, and you, you heard it, <laughs> you heard it. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, uh, it's quite ancestral what he's going through. And what he has to do in order to be a part of the brotherhood that he loves so much, to go back to his beautiful wife and child, you know, that quiet ritual, um, it costs something. And in and, and shooting that, it was a big day because I was thinking about Glenn, Joe, Tom, Christina, JD, you know, my, my work at, and, and having to conjure all of that for that one moment. Um, 
I should, it, I should mention to the audience because they haven't seen it. Yeah. There is a very powerful moment with you in front of a mirror. Mm, yeah. And I think that's what you're saying. That's what I'm discussing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I just yeah, want to yeah, let yeah. people know that yeah. when you see the movie, you will understand the scene you're talking about. I, I was watching it mesmerized because I, I was just buying into your raw emotion on screen. Mm. But anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, I mean, well, and, 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 and also to conclude, that is why. Because people are going to watch that. And, and though we may have different walks of life, you've been there. You told us earlier, hope you don't mind, how you started this by yourself so long ago. And now it's one of the biggest, you know, you had to have conversations like that with yourself. Every one of us to get in this room, to get through the day, have those conversations. And so uh, I would say that was a big C. Indeed. Uh, uh, um, Just to say, yeah, that was like day two. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, so this is Jonathan Majors. Got <laughs> it. Um, I, I so. showed up early that day. I remember I wasn't even I wasn't even supposed to come till later. And I just remember watching that scene and being like, oh, my gosh, this guy's coming to play. And I was I was I was thrilled. I never I, I felt so at peace about this movie after watching that scene, because this guy puts everything he has into it into every moment of this movie. I, I have to stop this interview because they're gonna absolutely kill me. But I will say that that's, again, I'm a very big fan of your work and what you do on screen and the performance in this film anchors a very powerful story. And I really wanna say congratulations to all of you Thanks, man. for delivering. I, I know people are gonna love the movie and I just wanna thank you so much for coming in and I wish you nothing but the best for your rest of your, your tip pleasure. experience. Thank you, thank yeah, you. Thank really you. appreciate it, man. Cool, it's never gonna be better than this interview. <laughs> <laughs>